Uh, so I'm going to be talking to you today about renal cell carcinoma. It's definitely my favorite child of all the GU tumors that uh, I work with. And there have been a lot of changes going on in the um, many past 10 plus years. And you could argue that we're splitters versus lumpers, but there is a lot of genetic information behind splitting these tumor types, uh, and I do think there's importance to many of them. So we'll be talking about them, uh, including some of those that are newly included in the WHO, some of the hereditary-related uh, renal cell carcinomas, how to use biomarkers to identify these various subtypes, and hopefully at the end, um, I have a lot of material squished into this hour. We'll get to it, but medullary tumors are one of my favorite topics, and I'd like to teach you and talk to you about an approach to diagnosing medullary-based tumors of the kidney. So as just mentioned, the recent WHO, at least in 2016, uh, has changed the subclassification of renal cell carcinomas. Uh, there's already talk about the next uh, edition with some changes coming, um, but we'll stick to what's been going on so far. And these changes have come about, of course, because of all of the um, updated modalities that we can use. Traditionally, it was just H&E morphology, maybe even some electron microscopy for oncocytomas and such. But now between immunostains, cytogenetics, it's one of the fewer epithelial tumors that shows distinctive and recurrent uh, chromosomal changes, uh, fish, uh, gene expression profiling, so much next-gen sequencing, we really can separate these tumors into very distinctive subtypes. So it's been an exciting field. So this is an overview here of the changes in the 2016 WHO. The list on the left are the malignant adult type renal cell carcinomas, uh, and the list on the right is the expanded, showing you changes as well as five new entities um, that have been added to the list, uh, giving a total of 14 uh, renal cell carcinomas uh, in the malignant adult category. Now, here's another list of entities that are very recognizable that are not currently in the WHO. I'll be talking about a couple of these today, uh, but mostly these are just ones to look out for in the future, and are some of them, at least, if not all of them, will likely be included in the w new, up the next uh, WHO classification. So. What can I say to you about these? I'm making the, door, the diagnosis of renal cell carcinoma. First and foremost, I'm a morphologist. I do love biomarkers. I think they're fun. They can be detective-like work. But at the end of the day, I'm a morphologist. And when you look at a lot of these renal cell carcinomas, you can actually distinguish them by H&E alone. They are a heterogeneous group of tumors. And when they are perfect, you can make the diagnosis on H&E, as with these eight examples listed here. The problem is there's also so much morphologic overlap between between these tumors. And here I have two examples of two different renal cell carcinoma subtypes that I think if I just gave you these H&Es uh, on an exam, everyone would call them clear cell renal cell carcinoma, clear cells, nested, alveolar, vascular pattern, and I think that would be the diagnosis. But if you include clinical pathologic correlation, maybe some immunostains, you could get to two different diagnoses. And here on the right, on your left-hand side, it's a clear cell renal cell carcinoma, and on uh, your right-hand side, this is an XB11 translocation renal cell carcinoma, indistinguishable in these two